Hey everyone, today I wanted to review and rank some of the most unique add-ons of DBD. The way I'm classifying these add-ons is that they are add-ons that generally nerf you, however as a broader way of identifying them, they unlock a new ability of some kind that your character wouldn't otherwise have, and is largely not present anywhere else in the game also. I won't be including meme add-ons in here, as we already rank those. Let's get into it. Judith's Tombstone I will be including in here as it's incredibly unique in the way it it alters the game. It lets you mori everyone after hitting tier 3, which is quite a substantial gameplay shift and is unheard of when it comes to add-ons. I really hate this add-on. It sucks. <laughs> For one, you get a 9% reduction to movement speed in tier 3. Further, everyone knows when you have this thing. It takes a lot longer to charge your tier 3, so by the time you get it, everyone knows to jump into a locker to avoid the mori, or just make lots of distance, pre-dropping everything. Unless paired with infinite tier 3, this add-on is honestly pretty miserable to use. Iridescent Company Banner is a unique add-on that allows you to remotely block off window vaults whenever you draw a guard trail through a vault location. When they vault whilst being chased, it also blocks vaults, and if they try to exit through gates, the gates are blocked during a hunt. It's an interesting add-on, with the main unique effect being the remote vault blocking. It kinda sucks though if I'm honest. Most of the time a survivor will be running away from wherever you place a trail, or if they're being chased, they'll be making distance. If they do try to double back for the flag, it's likely they'll take another route, so often the blockage doesn't do much. Cool concept, but kind of boring in practice I find. Iridescent Unpublished Manuscript is an add-on that lets you have two terror radiuses. Whenever you remotely activate a drone, for the next 15 seconds it emits a 32 meter terror radius. It's a very cool idea, however I've never seen it gain me value in any way, and when I've asked survivors who I've faced when using it, they've confessed they weren't aware it was even happening. It's unfortunate, but this add-on is just very gimmicky, and it's hard to even get value from, I think. Black Box is an add-on that works as a small Blood Warden effect. After opening the exit gates, survivors who are asleep will be blocked from leaving for 15 seconds. Tiny effect, and only really comes into play on the rare occasion, but when it does work, it is pretty fun, and definitely surprises survivors. However, it basically never works, with it I believe not working on the obsession, and also not working on awake survivors, which just narrows its already niche effects even more. Obsidian Goblet, a lot of iridescence, I didn't even realise, is an add-on that will make you undetectable when walking on your trails. This is pretty terrible, but can be somewhat viable if you adjust your playstyle. It's pretty good if you manage to connect a few gens together, allowing you to walk between them silently. This rarely happens though, and if you want to maintain pressure, you kind of have to relinquish these sets of trails a lot of the time. I really like the idea of this, making you silent on these specific areas, but it's just too restrictive unfortunately. It's mildly fun though I think. Tombstone Peace is the baby version of the full tombstone, except it's quite substantially better. Peace lets you mori survivors the same as the full tombstone, only it takes a lot less to charge it, and once you've done one mori, you were kicked from tier 3, unlike the full tombstone's ability to wipe a full team in one tier 3. This add-on is incredibly powerful, and allows you to remove a player fairly early into the trial. I wouldn't say it's fun, it's just quite strong. It certainly doesn't feel satisfying as it's largely unearned, and in general I just feel a bit bad for using it. But I think more fun than the ones prior. It doesn't like nerf you at least, <laughs> and it's not overly niche I suppose. BFFs is the only add-on in the game that works on a token basis. You can gain tokens by getting consecutive hits in Frenzy, earning more the longer your Frenzy chain is. Once you've earned at least 15 tokens, you gain a 4% boost to movement speed when all generators are powered. This add-on I love for the concept and think it's very cool that it works on a token basis, however it's just quite honestly really bad. <laughs> you're going to get minimal value, if any, from it. It also has a bunch of restrictions like being an endgame only add-on, an add-on you need to earn before you can use it, and the additional 4% doesn't even work in Frenzy. It's a weird add-on, with a cool build-up effect, but a pretty dull and ineffective power. VHS is a clown add-on that has the unique effect of switching the colours of the clown's bottles. It makes the pink bottles yellow and yellow into
into pink, but each keep their original effect. It makes for a somewhat confusing situation where yellow slows survivors and pink speeds you up. It's kind of fun, even for the simple reasons of altering the visuals slightly. And I can't think of another power that kind of does this, like switches the, the visuals but keeps the effects. Depleted Ink Ribbon is a relatively interesting add-on that allows you to place a trap of sorts in the exit gates, which I can't think of any other add-on doing. When all generators are powered, if you destroy a zombie, they'll spawn within the exit gates, beyond the doors. When a survivor opens the door, they are faced with a zombie that will attack them. This sounds really cool, but unfortunately, zombies are horribly slow, and even when they do somehow catch someone off guard, you're more than likely too far away to get value from it. It's a weird add-on that sets a trap, but the trap is ineffective and kind of at the wrong place at the wrong time. Cool though, and it's somewhat fun I think, watching in anticipation to see if the survivors get hit. Wakazashi Sire is an add-on that allows you to press a button to instantly return to your husk almost like a rewind time effect. This add-on is interesting in theory, with the idea being that you phase toward a survivor from the other side of a vault or something, they hear the sounds, vault, and then you rewind back into them. This is quite hit and miss though, and is very situational for the loop you're on. I did have a little fun using it though. I dislike Spirit quite a bit, so it was a nice little refresher, and made her a little more fun, I suppose. Cut Through You Single is a trickster add-on that lets you damage more than one survivor at once, with the blades having a piercing effect. If it hits a second survivor, it only deals 50% damage however. It's a cool idea, and doesn't get to be used much, but when it does come into effect, it is pretty fun, and can make for some interesting moments, with rare occasions where you can get a quick double down. It's okay. Scrap Tape is an add-on that alters Doctor's Shock into a circular shape with an empty center. This I'm considering a unique add-on, as it's just such a strange effect and no other add-on in the game really alters the literal shape of your power in this way. It makes it so often when you shock the survivors, they'll dodge it without even trying, as they'll be in the center of the circle. You have to predict movement more and use the circular ring to your advantage, as it does have the potential to cover a lot of survivors at once when used right. A weird and slightly painful one, but somewhat interesting and fun to play around with. Low Pro Chains is an add-on that allows you to continue a chainsaw sprint even after to hitting a pallet. Chainsaw sprinting into a pallet will break the pallet and continue your sprint. However, if you hit a survivor closely after this, it'll only do one health state of damage instead of being an insta-down. This add-on is admittedly very fun when it works. A lot of the time, it just never really comes into play. People pre-drop or round corners too fast to where you can't even make use of the effect. It can be fun for sure though. I'm pretty terrible at Billy, but this add-on makes him more enjoyable for sure. Summoning Stone is unique for its ability to block pallets, being I believe the only add-on in the game capable of doing this. It works as a small version of Hex Blood Favor. When landing a rush attack, pallets within 16 meters are blocked for 15 seconds. It's a nice effect and can be quite strong. It's definitely a fun add-on too, often catching survivors off guard, with it pairing well with Blight's fast movement. Iridescent Queen is an add-on worth touching on I think, due to how it works. It's quite unique. Basically, when shocking a survivor, it applies a charge onto them that they carry with them until coming close to another survivor. When they come close to another, the charge jumps between survivors and shocks the other person too. It's a very unique effect, and something similar I can only really think of happening is with powers, like how Singularity's pods are able to jump when survivors are close. This add-on is a bunch of fun, and it's partly down to it being very powerful. It lets you have a lot of control, and constantly constantly keep survivors shocked revealing locations, and just retaining a lot of pressure. Really cool add-on. Lifeguard Whistle is an add-on that allows for a very interesting playstyle, where you can use demos portals almost like tripwires or sensors around the map. What this add-on does is make it so when a survivor steps within a meter of a portal, they get revealed with instinct, without you needing to charge your shred. This is an add-on I really enjoy, although it's definitely a less effective way to play demo. It's just interesting and unique, and it's fun to 
to be able to track so many people from across the map. If you place your portals in high traffic areas, you have instances where you see a bunch of survivors at once. It can also be somewhat viable on loops, where you can track the whereabouts of a survivor. Jenna's Last Breath is an odd but interesting add-on for Nurse, and allows her to reverse her blinks. Once you've used all your blinks, you can undo those blinks and return back to where you started, and further receive an additional blink charge. It's quite a fun way to play her, and does definitely catch survivors off guard. The main issue is just getting it to work, as ideally you need survivors to double back into you, or the location of where you began. It can work, but definitely a little tricky. Waterlog Shoe is now the method to receive the highest base movement speed in the game, making you 4.73 meters per second. This comes at the cost of removing your ability to teleport, and altering your traps to be slow down focused. If a survivor triggers one, they will be inflicted by a 9% hindered status effect. This add-on is actually pretty fun now, and isn't so miserable. It lets you have the fastest base movement speed in the game of 4.73 meters per second, which is really cool, especially because it's on HAG. This add-on is a lot of fun now I think, and is fairly viable with the playstyle of using the traps as slowdown tools, rather than teleporting to them. It's still worse, but for the fun factor, it's definitely quite enjoyable, I think. Paint Thinner is the highest rarity add-on that gives Freddy dream palettes instead of snares. I'm going to roll all of these palette ones into one. Dream palettes, I believe, are the only instance in a power where an add-on entirely changes it, and literally switches a whole ability out for something else. These are, without a doubt, a lot of fun. They're somewhat of a gimmick, and will only catch people out a couple times, but those few times are definitely worth it. It's quite satisfying getting value from the fake palettes and surprising survivors. Chatterer's Tooth is an add-on that alters Pinhead's power entirely, and makes it so you always see where the box is. The downside is that when picking up the box, instead of a chain hunt, you become undetectable for 25 seconds. It's a kind of bizarre effect, but transforms your power into more of a stealth-based one, where you can routinely locate the box, reveal survivor locations, and make an approach whilst you're silent. I managed to get this gameplay just before he was kill-switched, however my game did crash halfway through. <laughs> This add-on is a bunch of fun, and a very refreshing way to play Pinhead. My main gripe with this add-on is I feel the undetectable could last longer, but really it's not much to complain about. Trick Blades are a trickster add-on that make your blades ricochet twice off of the environment. These are incredibly fun, and make his power a lot more interesting in my opinion. You're able to get hits round corners, and at some really interesting angles. It's a bunch of fun, and I would definitely recommend trying it out. Spasmodic Breath is a really really interesting add-on that transforms Nurse into an M1 killer. After landing a blink attack, you'll enter a 60 second duration of being unable to blink. However, during this time, your base movement speed is increased to 4.6 meters per second. It's really interesting to play her this way, and I enjoyed it a lot adjusting between the different speeds and styles of play with both blinks and basic movement. It's a fairly effective add-on, as it seemed to really catch the survivors off guard. It's a very unique way to play her, but also also just any character, with it essentially just removing your power for a brief instance and forcing you to think on your feet a bit as you have to adapt. Alright, well, that's gonna do it. Which unique add-on is your favourite to use? Alternately, which add-on do you think might have deserved to be in this list that I missed? Let me know down below. Thanks, and goodbye.